Hi all, today we are going to discuss about air brake circuit breakers. So these employs the high resistance interruption method of arc extension. So this is based on the simple principle, the resistance of the arc is increased rapidly to a high value such that the voltage of the source is no longer enough to maintain the arc. So what we basically do if you are taking this as your supply, this is your source impedance or your impedance up to that point. So this is your circuit breaker. So here whatever arc is produced, we elongate in such a way that the arc length is so much increased. So automatically resistance of the arc is increased. So if it is carrying a fault current of IF, so IF multiplied by this arc resistance that gives IFRA. So this IFRA is far far greater than Vs. So automatically because this IFRA cannot be greater than Vs, so automatically the fault current goes on decreasing. It will decrease to a extreme low value and finally it will extinguish. This is the basic working principle of this one or otherwise this can be represented in this form also. The arc voltage that means the fault current multiplied by arc resistance should be greater than your supply voltage in order to extinguish the arc. So how this is employed? So this arc resistance can be increased by lengthening the arc, cooling the arc, reducing the cross section of the arc or splitting the arc. Using all these techniques, we can increase the resistance. We have already discussed how these will increase the resistance in our previous sections in the beginning of circuit breaker. So this technique is mainly used in low voltage AC circuit breakers, which are also called as air brake circuit breakers because the topic itself is air brake. Similar is the case miniature circuit breakers which are used in our household, they are also air brake type and medium voltages also they are used, so they are also air brake type as well as the low voltage and medium voltage DC breakers up to 12 kV. So they also employ this air brake type circuit breakers only. So these are mainly useful where the frequent operation is required. We have seen in our last class that minimum oil circuit breaker uses the oil. And the oil has a very high dielectric strength around 110 kV per centimeter. So they are better than the air. But the problem is wherever the frequent operation is required. So in that case, the, due to the effect of carbonization, the maintenance cost of the oil circuit breaker is very high. So high resistance method is not suitable for high voltage AC breakers and high voltage DC breakers because the lengthening of the arc for higher voltages will be very large will be required in meters which is not practically possible. That's why it is limited to up to 12 kV. So now let us see what are the different type of structures you see in practice. So first one is the plain air brake circuit breaker. So plain air brake circuit breaker will simply have the construction like this. It will have a arc horn. The current will enter like this under normal condition and the current will leave like this. But whenever the circuit breaker is opened like this, the contacts will separate. So automatically the arc will be established between these two. Agree with me? So whenever the arc is established, the so much heat is produced. We know that as this is, this will be kept in natural outside, outdoor only. So what happens? Whichever is a hot air, the hot air always want to go up in the atmospheric conditions and the whichever gas is having the low temperature that will try to come down. This is the common tendency. So we are going to use that natural tendency here. Now because of the heat that is produced, the arc will go on moving. So when the arc is moving, automatically you can see the gap is increasing. So this process will increase and this will reach up to this much length. So you can see here as the arc length is increasing, obviously the resistance increases and the current will goes on decreasing. And the current will reach to that much extent, it will extinguish the arc. That means the amount of separation, so this length should be that multiplied by the fault current should be greater than your supply voltage. In that case, it can extinguish your arc. That means the arc will move like this upwards and finally it extinguishes at some natural current zero. This is the basic thing. But the disadvantage of this one is because this is a lengthy process and second one, because it is not so much efficient because sometimes the arc may not extinguish or the gap between the contacts required will be more. So wherever you want the fast operation, then we go for another technique called as magnetic blow type circuit breakers. So in this method, the lengthening is achieved by the magnetic blow out coils. The name itself is telling blow out. That means it will push out the arc. So the circuit current flows through the coils placed below the arc runners and the magnetic field created by the current in these coils blow the arc into the arc cheats rapidly. So what does it mean? So thereby the arc will be cooled, lengthened and split and increase the resistance 
and to a value that the arc cannot be maintained. So, how this is done? So, here the coil will be like this. If you are taking your input current, the coil will be wound like this. The coil will be wound in such a way that you can find the direction of the magnetic field by using your right hand thumb rule where your curled finger indicates the direction of the current then your thumb indicates this indicates my direction of flux and this indicates my direction of the current. So, you can see here the current is passing like this when the current is passing like this automatically the magnetic field will be inside that means if you take the magnetic field it is going inside not towards us it is going inside. So, that is why it can be represented by cross. So, we can tell that the magnetic field will pass inside. So, under normal operating condition what happen this moving contact will close these two contacts. So, the current will come like this it will pass through this magnetic coil and go out and throughout. So, now under normal condition there will be no effect, but whenever the moving contact is moved. So, automatically the arc will be established across these contacts. So, let us assume the arc is established. So, the arc is established like this. So, due to the arc what happens the current comes passes through this coil and passes in this way agree with me. So, as the current is passing like this you can apply your Fleming's left hand rule to find the direction of the force exerted on this. So, you can apply your Fleming's left hand rule. So, this is your direction of the magnetic field and this is your direction of the current then this indicates the direction of the force. You can apply your Fleming's left hand rule. This magnetic field is pointing inwards that means into the paper and your current is pointing from left to right then your force is exerted on this it will be upwards. So, the force is exerted on the upward direction. So, because of the force what happens the arc is pushed up. Already there is a phenomenon of because of heat hot air it is already pushed and this magnetic field is aiding in pushing this arc further upwards. So, what happens the arc will be pushed like this again the force is applied again it is pushed like this and this phenomena will continue and the arc will continue like this they will go on moving like this and finally it reaches to a length here arc splitters are the insulating materials because of the arc splitters the length of the arc increases drastically when the length of the arc is increased drastically automatically the resistance is increased. I am just explaining briefly again. So, here these coils whatever are there they carry the current in such a way the direction of the magnetic field produced by them if you apply your right hand thumb rule it will be into the paper that means it will be inside that means it can be represented by the cross that means it is going inside that is why I am representing like this. So, now when the arc is produced this arc is actually carrying the current because the current goes like this through this actually this both sides this arc runner is made up of copper. So, the current enters like this and through this arc it will return back. So, let us take the case the current is passing like this. So, you apply your Fleming's left hand rule your this cross indicates that means your magnetic field is going into the paper your current is moving from left to right then your thumb will point upwards that means the force will be exerted on this arc upwards. So, automatically the arc will go on moving upwards and the length will go on elongating. So, what is happening it is aiding the extension of the arc or elongation of the arc. So, that is why it is called as the magnetic blowout coils. So, that is the reason. So, there is one more type of technique that is also used in practice that is called as arc shoot air brake circuit breaker. In the arc shoot air brake circuit breakers again similar type of construction will be there. Here there will be several different splitter plates will be made up of steel they are inserted in the path and in because in the case of previous two methods only single terminals are used for both under normal condition as well as under fault conditions. So, but the problem is under fault conditions so much enormous amount of the heat is produced. So, if the normal copper is exposed to that much temperature there is a chance that contacts may damage. So, that creates the problem. So, in order to avoid that problem here the contacts are divided into two separate contacts. One contact is the arcing contact which is also called as auxiliary contact. So, these are used to withstand the huge value of the heat that is produced during arcing. They are made up of copper alloy to withstand more heat and the main contacts will be here. These are the main contacts. The contacts are here 1, 2 and 3. So, these are my main contacts. These main contacts are made up of copper and they are plated with the silver to decrease the contact resistance. So, under normal operating condition what happens the current will enter like this and the current will return back like this. So, this way the current will enter and return back. So, this will pass through this contact number 1. So, it will pass like this contact number 2 and return back. So, they are not passing through the arc runners. It is not passing through the arc runners. Now, what happens whenever these contacts are separated 
this main contacts are separated but still the arc runner or this auxiliary contacts are not separated immediately so after opening this contacts what happens this current will be diverted through these arc contacts so it will pass like this and return back so through this it will return back through this one that means through this springs it will come back so these it is current is passing through this one so after some time these will be opened when these are opened the arc will establish between them so the arc is established so when the arc is established so automatically because of the hot because it is hot so automatically it will be pushed up so it will be pushed up and it will go on pushing up so either it can be a natural process or you can use the coils which i have used previously magnetic load can, coils can be used here to fasten the process of moving finally the arc will come up to here and the arc will split into these arc splitters so whenever the arc is split into the arc splitters because these arc splitters are made up of steel they will absorb the heat and dissipate at a faster rate as they dissipate the heat at a faster rate automatically because by dissipating the heat or cooling the arc we can increase the resistance so along with the by elongating here cooling is also done at a faster rate that's why the arc will be extinguished so much easily that means wherever your rating is more we will go for this circuit breaker arc shoot circuit breaker along with the magnetic load coils and wherever you want to go for the medium rating then you can either go for the arc shoot break circuit breakers or magnetic blow tech circuit breakers and wherever the rating or the voltage is very less so in that case we can go for the plane break circuit breakers if you see outside near the transformer you will observe this plane break circuit breakers will be used there because it is very easy maintenance free and so many benefits are there so wherever the frequent operation and safety is required we can go for these things but the disadvantage of this circuit breakers is we cannot go for very high value of the voltages because in that case the size of the circuit breakers increases drastically and the second one this cannot be used for very high rating current because when you are going for very high rating current in that case the heat produced will be so much high so this procedure will not be sufficient to extinguish the arc so wherever you are going for the low or medium ratings and low or medium voltages we can go for this air brake circuit breakers but wherever you want that your power rating is very huge or your voltage is more so in that case we will go for air blast circuit breakers that i am going to discuss in the next class i hope what is air brake circuit breaker how it works and limitations are clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much